Hi, this is the advisor with Stacey Chalemi, founder of the Complete Herbal Guide. Today, I'm really excited because we have a special guest. We have Dr. Erica Steele. And from the early age, Dr. Steele was fascinated by the body ability to heal itself, a product of two Marines. She was raised in a vegetarian and a practice in Native American. As a result, she was um, an elect electric upbringing that leads her to her wisdom as a holistic doctor. She combines her knowledge gained from six degrees in natural healthcare and practical tips and wisdom from her life expand in her consciousness and her self-healing. So today I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Steele. Dr. Steele, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Yeah. So a little bit about my background, like, you know, um, yeah. So I'm a holistic doctor in family practice. I have six degrees in my field and they're all in the natural healthcare space. So one of the stands that I took early on from a little girl, I knew I was going to be a doctor. Um, and I researched the types of doctors and their origin stories and all of that. And I really decided, well, I actually feel like it decided for me, but, right. <laughs> but I, you know, the <laughs> calling, right. So, yeah. um, you know, I really took a stand to become a drugless doctor. And that was something that was really important to me way before it was even trendy or popular. It was really a matter of teaching people what they needed to know in order to heal themselves, because yeah. I have a really good ability to take very complex um, topics and concepts and break them down into practical steps for people to follow. And so I do that every day in my practice. Um, I'm in family, general family practice. So I treat a wide array of people. Um, I treat young families looking to raise their children holistically. Um, I teach uh, older families who um, suffer from chronic disease, unfortunately, and, and teach them how to heal themselves and work with a myriad of chronic diseases. And those suffer Suffering with mental health, mental health disorders, um, from a natural perspective, of course, um, performance and optimal functioning. So those high level professionals that, you know, want that competitive edge, um, yeah. as well as, um, you know, metabolic cases and people that want to lose weight. So that's my, my standard patient demographic. And I, you know, work with lots and lots of people all over the world. So I'm really grateful for that. That's awesome. You know, I feel like today a lot of doctors tend to, you know, just give a patient a pill too easily. And I see, you know, you know, first, you, you know, a person comes in with ailments and, and a doctor would immediately, you know, prescribe a prescription to try to make them feel better. And then a lot of times what happens is that that prescription gives them side effects or gives them other symptoms and they think more things are wrong with them or they're not just feeling better. So either the doctor either gives Gives them another medication to treat those symptoms or puts them on a different medication, but the root cause, the problem itself never gets solved. And I feel so many times that a lot of things we need to find the root cause of, you know, there's always a root cause of why someone's not feeling the way they, they should, you know, and how do you feel about that? Do you feel like there is always like a root cause for a lot of different issues? There is, um, for sure. Unfortunately, I think our healthcare system in general is highly reactive. Um, I think patients are unaware of their health and, and how their health is. And so then they wait until they have, you know, really, um, uh, big symptoms, big yeah. feeling symptoms, mm -hmm. and then they go into the doctor and the doctor's very reactive as well, not teaching the patient personal responsibility, but rather going, oh, here, I'm going to give you a Band-Aid to fix the, the symptom. And then just as you mentioned, you know, then, then one um, symptom leads to another, which leads to another, and you're never really getting to the root cause. And the root cause, in my opinion, is really patient accountability. It, you, you can't expect any doctor to fix your unhealthy habits, such as right. your unhealthy heat eating, your lack of drinking water, your stress management, your lack of emotional intelligence, you know, and so it creates this really unrealistic expectation for both the patient and the provider. It's like the patient doesn't want to be responsible. They go to the doctor, they give their power away to the doctor. Yes. The doctor doesn't have time to really go deep into the case because they're under managed care, which is yes. under insurance. Mm -hmm. So they only have seven minutes and it's like, 
here, take this and I'll see you in two weeks. Hopefully that works. Right. And so it's, the whole system in general really is very flawed for people that are really looking to transform their health, which is why I see many doctors across the country making that change. And, and I'm grateful to see it um, yes. because we, it's so needed for sure. I'm definitely seeing it now, but I, we do, you know, I, I see that so many times I, I would see people and I would speak with them and they would get so angry because they would go to the doctor, the doctor give them medication and they're not, they think that that medication is a magical pill for whatever ailments they have. And they get mad because like, okay, my problem is still here. You're not healing me. But a lot of people don't realize that our bodies give us signals, just like you mentioned, when we have an ailment or a symptom, our body's trying to tell us something is wrong, that there is a part of us that's not functioning right. And there is a reason for it. And a lot of times, like you mentioned, people overlook the minor symptoms until it becomes chronic. And then sometimes it can be too late. Don't you agree? Oh, a hundred percent. I've had so many cases where, you know, really minor things and they ignore this and they ignore that year after year after year. And then they wake up one day and now they have a chronic disease, a debilitating disease that either needs surgery or procedures, or even, you know, some of chemotherapy and things like radiation, things like that. And it's unfortunate. However, again, back to the system. So in the beginning, right. Of like when you're young, mm -hmm. a lot of times people associate doctors with shots, right. Yes. And so they, 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 they don't develop a healthy relationship with their providers mm -hmm. because it's just, Oh, I'm either going to go for pain or I'm going to go for bad news. So I'm going to stay away because I don't want either. Right. And right. so then they stay away from the doctor. And then now in this age, they Google everything thinking that they can get their information through Google or Facebook or TikTok or wherever, yeah. not having the appropriate education or information to disseminate, not to mention we can't treat ourselves. Like it's just exactly. not, even as a doctor, I have other providers that I go, Hey, can you look at this for me? Yes. Because I, I can't be objective. And so the whole system, again, it's flawed in the sense of building that relationship. Yes. I really wanted to bring back that old school family doctor. That was yeah. kind of my, my vision. I wanted to build a relationship with my patients where they enjoyed going to the doctor. It wasn't always bad news. It was right. a great experience. Like in our practice with our, with our kids, we have this huge train set that like they absolutely love. And it starts to build that healthy, positive relationship. So they make right. those associations early on so that they're not being neglectful. And then I'm teaching them at, you know, from an early age, but also to my adults, I think my kids are easier to teach, honestly, but you know, I, I teach them gradually what it means to be healthy, you know, drinking water, you know, eating pro, Routine, moving your body, you know, we go through these different things and, and they're very basic in, yeah. you know, information, but I think people ignore it and miss it. And there's also this phenomenon too, which I'll throw out there where we've all been programmed and trained to give to everyone else. Mm -hmm. And then it's selfish to give to ourselves. Yes. And if we give to ourselves first, then we're a bad person. So we're going to, we're going to have no boundaries. We're going to deplete ourselves. And then whatever scraps are left over, then we're going to give to ourselves. And unfortunately there's just not enough energy to go around. So it, again, it plays into that lack of responsibility. I, I'm going to get my self-worth from helping all these people, but I'm going to neglect myself. And uh, I've, you've made a whole bunch of really good points. One, I see that all the time, especially with moms, you know, they feel that they have to put a hundred percent of their energy into their children and family. But what happens is, is they get burnt out and then they can't take care of themselves. And then I, I would say to them, I have to remind them, you know, you cannot take care of your family and your children if you are not a hundred percent yourself, you know, and that's what happens to so many people. And I like the fact that, you know, you try to train children the, and teach them the right way to eat and a healthy way of living at such a young age, because I, in a, in a sense, it's like bringing home a puppy, you train mm -hmm. them from the beginning. And if you train them the right way, you know, yes. they keep it, it, it's embedded in their head. It's just a way yes. of life. It's, you know, and that is the best time to, 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 you know, teach it is, is when they're a child, because you're not stuck in your ways, you, you're open to anything you're learning, you know, and sometimes yes. when you get older, you're stuck in your ways. And another good point you made was that, 
people rely too much on the internet. You know, people don't realize that 60% of a lot of the information on the internet is fake news, or they're written by people that don't have the educational background to sustain the proper information to help people with, you know, whatever they're looking for. You know, I always, you know, when I read things, I have to make sure they're scientifically and medically correct. And mm -hmm. a lot of people don't do that. And I would hear people say, well, I saw this article on the internet and they yeah. go to do it right away. Yeah. And, you know, that could really really hurt somebody, you know, and a lot of times it's because people are trying to sell a product. So they, they put this information together and they make it sound wonderful. And then people think, oh, this is it. I'll use this and I'll feel better. And meanwhile, they end up either not feeling good at all, staying the same or becoming worse. And, you know, I think people have to realize also, like you mentioned, it's okay to get a, a, a go to another doctor. If you go to a regular primary or person who specializes in a specific area, you know, they can only help you within that area that they're educated in. So a good doctor is going to, you know, send you out to a specialist that's, you know, that is, is that will help you in that area. And a lot of times people are just, oh, my primary said this, so it has yeah. to be this. But, you know, if you're not getting better, Maybe you should go to another doctor or go to a holistic doctor and figure out what you're doing wrong. Because I, I, you know, when I started, when I went into holistic living, my body just changed within three months. I started seeing a humongous change in the way I was feeling from my energy level to the way I was my, my fogginess, everything, everything was changed. You know, I felt like I was 20 years younger, oh. you know? And people don't realize that, you know, yeah. a, a lot has to do with the way we eat as well. You know, I went on vacation just recently. I was stunned because I would say at least 85% of the people were overweight, you know, from the United States. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, it bothered me because in the United States, especially now they're glorifying saying it's beautiful to be overweight, but yeah. people don't realize the side effects of what yeah. overweight, you know, and obesity could do to you. And, you know, I, I'm a big believer in food for medicine. And I believe that, you know, what we put in our body plays a big reaction on how we feel. And it could also cause chronic illness as well. You know, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I think that there's, so you said a lot, of course, I think we have really robust conversations, which I'm enjoying it. <laughs> um, yeah. So I also like to teach them, the parents as well, how to actually do what I do. So that's really important as well, because it's not just about me. It's, a, it's about us all integrating. Like we've lost yeah. a lot of um, our, you know, indigenous background. We've lost yeah. a lot of that. We've lost a lot of where our, where our roots were and how we heal, how our grandmothers and grandfathers, yes. healed, um, people. So there's a lot of that missing from our society. And it then is, yeah. I do think there's a lot of mental and emotional trauma, which carries weight, which people hold on to weight. Yeah. And I think that people, are trying to reconcile that right now in our culture. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think necessarily weight in and of itself creates disease. It's, it's the metabolism and how the metabolism is, because there are some people who, um, you know, they're just heavier people. Now I'm not saying that they can't get themselves down to yes. a lean, mean, but I see people who are super thin that have really bad labs and people that are, you know, what yes. we quote unquote overweight, that their labs look great. Yeah. So, and, and when we look at nature, there are different animals of different shapes and sizes. So right. we look to nature to be able to help us to kind of understand things. But I do think that when you're carrying weight, asking yourself, do you feel comfortable in your body? Does this feel good to me? Right. Like right. for me, I don't, I feel very good as an athletic body. Like I yeah. feel, I like to feel strong in my body. I like to feel limber. I like to push myself physically. That yeah. feels good to me. Right. And so if I start to feel loose, you know, because I'm not working out or whatever, that's not going to feel good to me. Right. Um, and so I think we want to connect more with how we feel and not be resigned to saying, well, you know, my mom was big, so I must be big. Or, right. Or, you know, I can't seem to figure out how to lose weight. So I guess I'm just going to accept myself for, for how I, how I look and feel right. um, because there may be some other underlying issues, which goes back to your point about the internet, you know, there, 
the internet as well as books and seminars and you know youtube videos and all the yeah. things are spoken from general perspectives exactly. they're spoken from general educational purposes it's not specific in my practice we take over 350 data points on each individual patient yeah. and the reason that we do that is so we can provide individualized care so that we begin to understand on an individual level what's happening with that patient because every patient is so different. They have different genetics. Yes. They have different biochemistry, different mm -hmm. um, eating habits, lifestyle patterns, mental health, emotional health, ancestral patterns. I mean, we have so much richness and diversity. And so it's yeah. really important for us to look at the person as a whole person, as an individual, right. not just treating them. Oh, you have the markers that say you're diabetic. So I'm going to give you X, Y, Z diabetes. Now I'm not right. saying it's not important to manage glucose numbers, but I'm saying that, that the medical diagnose and manage model, um, yeah. that is done in allopathy, I think is, is wildly flawed. I think it's mm -hmm. good for an acute, uh, perspective. Like again, like if your glucose number is super high, you know, like I had to tell a patient yesterday, I'm like, uh, you know, like you're, you're, uh, you know, you may need insulin at this point just yeah. because of where your glucose numbers are. Right. And so there is a, a purpose for that. It's just not the full picture. And I, that's also why I became a holistic doctor because I wasn't satisfied with the simplistic, uh, nature yeah. of medicine. I wasn't, I wasn't satisfied with, Oh, you listen to the patient and you, you know, give, give a medication that, right. that just seems too simple to me. Yes. And then also too, you know, even in my field, right. I, we're trained to run a lab and treat the lab. We're not really trained to treat the patient. We're trained to, instead of like a lot of people practice alternative medicine, which is where you're pretty much just giving, instead of giving a, a pharmaceutical, you're giving a supplement or an herb yeah. and that's flawed too, because it's not mm -hmm. really teaching the patient. Like it no. makes the patient dependent upon a supplement exactly. or makes the patient dependent upon the doctor's knowledge. And that's that whole paradigm that I want us to get out of right. is that disempowered context that you don't know, like you, who else would know, you know, your body better than anyone on this planet. Exactly. Me as a doctor, I'm just trying to pull that information out of you and help you to be more aware. So it's really about patients being fully aware of their health and, and, and what things are in balance and not in balance and why those things are, which is why I ask my patients a lot of questions yeah. and kind of teach them, you know, a scientific way of thinking and that way right. they're trying to be curious about how their bodies work. You know, I, I think that's great because like, I, I think a lot of times we, we tend to avoid, you know, like we were talking earlier, the signs and the symptoms. And I, you know, I, a lot of times I think, you know, with leaky gut syndrome, like, you know, I feel like a lot of times, a lot of people have more bad bacteria than good back bacteria. And that if they change their way of living, that they change the way they were eating and, you know, incorporated more water and different ways, you know, different, even just minor exercise, minor movement, you don't have to be an athlete to exercise. Some people, may have conditions and they don't, can't really exercise, but if you could put 15 minutes into stretching or anything, you know, you will see a difference. You will mm -hmm. feel better just to get the circulation and the blood moving. You'll see a difference and just minor changes in your life. And sometimes I see, I think, you know, a lot of it is because we have so much in the United States, our food is so processed. Everybody's like, go, 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 you know, and people are buying these quick fix meals and it says protein, healthy, this and that. And they're not looking at the ingredients. And meanwhile, they're poisoning their bodies. We're causing more bacteria. We're causing, you know, we're causing a lot of problems. And I think, you know, leaky gut syndrome is, is, is yeah. one of the problems. How do you feel about leaky gut syndrome and, and bad bacteria and so forth? Yeah. So, um, I, I don't have a feeling about it, but I have a thought about it. Okay. And the thought is, is that it does exist, um, because our bodies are being bombarded with so many things. Majority of the immune system, neurological system, as well as the hormonal system is housed in our digestive tract. Right. And then we're exposed to food or food like substances, as I like to say, yeah. you know, that are GMOs that are herbicides that are pesticide ridden. 
and that our bodies were not used to being able to process. They can't identify it. Number one, yeah. so the food is seen as a pathogen. Number one, yeah. then, then we're exposed to different bacteria you know, from, from importing foods from different um, countries with different growing um, patternings. Yeah. Then we're exposed to, um, you know, different viruses. We've right. Had- a few running around. I don't know if you've heard about that, but, um, (laughs) you know, so we also have parasites and parasitic infections, you know, and mold, like even in Virginia, um, because it's so moist and so humid and the buildings are so old, we have so much mold in this area. So dangerous. Um, yeah, that people are unaware of. And then, and then that also leads into chemicals and heavy metals, which people are unaware that, you know, it's in everything. It's in our food, it's in our water, um, it's in our air. We're getting it from all, you know, our products or all the things, right? Our clothes. Yeah. So people don't even realize how much toxicity yes. is in our environment. It and is. so then our immune system and our digestive system is having to battle all of that. And then with the nutrient depletions in the food, what's happening is our digestive systems are becoming, um, you know, imbalanced. And so our livers become overloaded. So then yeast starts to brew. So then that dysbiosis and imbalance in bacteria, we're very be complex depleted. A lot of us some of us have undermethylation issues with the mm-hmm. genetics. And so yes. we're not able to process um, properly, not to mention a lot of us are antioxidant deficient. So because yes. we're getting bombarded with all these heavy metals and chemicals, it's eating up all the antioxidants. We don't even know because we're not monitoring those things. So eventually that gut lining, be- that integrity of that lining begins to separate and toxicity begins to leak through, yeah. which normally would have been encapsulated in and moved out of the system, either through the kidneys or through the digestive system. But now it's swimming in around the bloodstream. So now yes. people have skin conditions or they'll have sinus, chronic sinusitis, yes. or they'll have reproductive issues because a lot of the toxins are endotoxins, meaning yes. that they attack the endocrine organs. So like chlorine, which is found in a lot of people's water, yes. um, as an example, that that's one of the, the endotoxins. And there's so many more I could right. go on. On, oh no! Yeah, you know, there we're just being bombarded with it, and so then our bodies develop toxicity. So there's two things: we don't have enough nutrition, right, mm-hmm. either from our food or the digestive process right. is inhibited. So we're going nutrient depleted. We don't have enough energy to be able to detoxify our systems optimally. So then our body is holding on to toxicity. Then organ function begins to go down because. Yeah. There's too much of the bad things and not enough of the good things. And now that's when disease process occurs. Yeah. So, but that doesn't, that's not an instantaneous thing that takes a lot of time, yes. not to mention the fact that many women don't prepare to get pregnant. It's more of an oops kind of situation. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The immune system develops between the first 2000 days of life. That's inception to two years old. So also two rapid C-sections where they're not getting all of that bacteria bacteria going through the birthing canal, a lot of babies are formula fed and not that, that inhibits too. Cause a lot of the formulas, a lot of toxicity and they're not getting breast milk, not to mention mom's diet can be all over the place. Mm -hmm. Um, and she's the baby's feeding off of mom. And so then, you know, and then of course there's other medical treatments that are offered. There's colic and then the ear infections, and there's lots of antibiotics that are given again and again and again. So a lot of people's immune systems don't even get a good start to begin with. And then they're being bombarded with all of these environmental things. It's like an absolute modern day miracle that we are all still walking around. I mean, I, I agree I, with you. Dramatic, but I'm no. like, I'm like, the body is so resilient. Yes. To be able to take all of these abuses yes. and continue, continue to thrive and continue to bounce back. And, you know, it is my belief, but it's by truly the grace of God that we are all still here. Yeah. And so I think this is such a great evolution where people are really waking up. I think the end information age has, has, has been a catalyst for that. Yeah. Because you can see it, you know, you can see what's happening in real time, which is, really yes. Cool. 
you know, I agree, I agree 100%. Like people don't realize how toxic it is from the moment you wake up and the air we breathe and depending on the environment you live in, you know, as soon as you walk out that door, there are so many different toxins and there are so many toxins in your house that you don't even realize. And the products we use, you know, when I went to Europe, half the products that we use in America were banned in Europe. They were, they would not sell them in Europe. And, you know, people don't realize one. Okay. So you talked about water. So if people like it, you know, sometimes, well, they do it in all the towns, they'll send a letter. If your water is bad in your town, please mm -hmm. don't drink the water, you know, mm -hmm. drink bottled water. Well, one bottled water, the plastic isn't good. If the, if the sun hits it, the toxins go into the water. And then two, you're using that water when you take a shower. So mm -hmm. your pores open up and they're still mm -hmm. going into your body. So one, you may not be drinking it. You may not be boiling your pasta with it, but it's still going in you because you're taking a shower. Exactly. You're getting that toxin. And then what type of soap are you using? You know, yeah. perfume soap. Are you using soaps with chemicals in them? You know, mm -hmm. people don't think about these things. All these creams that are selling mm -hmm. anti-aging and this and that. But what's in these creams? Are how pure and how organic are they? Are mm -hmm. they natural? Do they have perfumes mm -hmm. and ingredients? I always say, look at the ingredients. If you can't say the word, it must not be good for you, you know? Yeah. Exactly. And it's exactly. like, you know, and like we said, the food you eat, there's mm -hmm. so many, so many, contra you know, little things to, con you know, that yeah. contribute to our health and people yes. have to really examine the life they're living and the products yeah. they're using, the food yeah. they're eating, you know, and we do, we live in a toxic world, you know, what, you know, sadly, what, when COVID came, our environment got better because everybody yeah. was in the house. Nobody was using, nobody would, they were, the shipping wasn't going on. You know, they said the ozone layer closed closed, you know, and it was like all these things because, you know, we weren't producing all these toxic, you know, products and, you know, we weren't yeah. doing all these different things. So it, it shows mm -hmm. you that we are our worst enemies, aren't we? Yeah, we really are. And then I think the other piece too, that we don't think about is, you know, our mental and our emotional state, right. Yes. And all of this, because when you start to kind of open up your awareness and you go, Oh my gosh, like all these things, it does elicit, it can elicit fear. Right. Oh, definitely. And, then it's, and then disempowerment and powerlessness and all of those things. And again, that's where the faith comes in. It's like, you know what, do the, but you do your best and forget the rest. Right. Exactly. So I like that. I and that tell, rhymes. <laughs> I know. I always tell people, I always say to people, I go, you know, like start with one area. Don't like throw everything out. Like as, as you use up products, just build more awareness and go, yeah. Oh, what's a healthier alternative. Right. You know, WG.org environmental working group. You know, they've done a lot of research. They're a third party independent yeah. and you know, they, they grade products, which is amazing. And, and yeah. they, they've been doing this for years, which has been really cool. And so, yes. you know, now, because not even if like you pointed out before, it's like not even the, the so-called natural um, products are the most amazing anymore. Yeah. And so you really have to be very conscious and aware. And which means that you, you want to have that mental and that emotional piece together right. because if you're reacting, if your emotions are over here and then you're freaking out yourself and your mind's over here, yeah. you're not going to be able to create action. Yes. So it's really about getting still with yourself. That was the yes. one cool thing about COVID is that people stopped in their tracks and they had to sit still with themselves yeah. mm -hmm. for like the first time. And a lot of people were like, Oh my gosh, I don't have any emotional skills. I don't, I don't even know what to do. I don't even like this person I live with. You know, I don't, you know, like they, people were forced to stop and yeah. reflect and really take personal inventory. We're yeah. about to go into the new year. Of course, that's an amazing time to do a personal inventory. Of oh, your life. 100%. Yeah. You know, all areas of your life from your mindset to your physical health to your emotional health to your products in your house to, yeah. you know, your spiritual health and well being, all of it. It's your yes. relationships. It's like, okay, what things are working in this area of my life? What things are not working? Right. And what am I going to do? And how am I going to implement this for the future? So exactly. I think there's a lot of practical things. And I think, 
people we're still in that, that like quick fix culture, like you talked about before yeah. where it's like, okay, so I learned all these things. I listened to this podcast or learn all these things. Now I need to go and do everything tomorrow. And you're right. going to wear yourself out. You're yes. going to stress yourself out. You're going to be so overwhelmed. And it's really, it's not good for your mental and emotional no. health, which is also why I'm a holistic doctor, because I like to look at everything, not yeah. just one little piece of, of the puzzle. So well, that's what I love about holistic doctors is that when you go to a holistic doctor, they check for everything, you know, they check for things that don't even exist, but could exist. Mm-hmm. They just, and, you know, and they warn you ahead of time, if they see something that's a little off, but it's not there, yeah. but it could be if you don't take care of yourself and do X, Y, and Z. And that's what I, I, I love the best about it. And, you know, you talked about stress, people don't realize, but over 70% of illness is caused by stress. So think about that. Think how powerful that is. Think how powerful stress is if you don't learn how to handle stress. Exactly. Yes. And, and the East really talks about stress quite a bit with the meridian system. They talk about their emotions. They talk about how, if you don't process your emotions properly, it creates disease. Yes. The West is just beginning opening up to that. Yes. We've really been in survival mode of like, shut it down and keep working, keep yes. moving, keep going forward. And again, it's like, if you don't mind your mental health and your emotional health, it is going to catch up because your thoughts create your emotions and then your emotions create your actions. Yes. So if, you, if you are either in an inactivity with your health or you feel stuck or resistant, or, you know, you don't know what to do. It's right. probably because there's an emotional piece that hasn't been yes, resolved 100%. and a mental piece that hasn't been yes. resolved. And so we want to start to connect with our emotions and just begin to become more self-aware to understand, okay, how do I feel and accept it? Even, even the not so great emotions, even yeah. like anger and sadness and grief and all the different emotions. It's important for us to own them. They are part of our creation. It's what we're creating within ourselves. And there's root causes behind that. And Mm -hmm. there's different ways to become aware of them and transform them and reframe them into healthier ones. But we also want to be mindful of, especially in the spiritual communities, there's a lot of toxic positivity going around where it's like, Oh, you're just supposed to be happy all the time. Well, no, not really. Like true healing, um, true shadow integration is Mm -hmm. looking at the positive, but also looking at the negative too. And then integrating all of that in so that you have more inspired action so that really at the end of the day, you can fulfill upon whatever mission that you have on this planet, because if you haven't noticed this planet needs just a little bit of work. Um, (laughs) We got a couple things happening that we may want to be a little bit aware of. And so if we all learn to self-actualize, which means looking at our mental and our emotional and spiritual, as well as our physical health and well-being to be able to perform, then we're able to turn this little crazy ship around that we're all floating around on. So it's important. I think everything is like interconnected, you know, mind, body, and soul is is definitely connected. I always suggest I'm a big fan of meditation because if you could take just 15 minutes in the morning and maybe 15 minutes at night, and you could just meditate and close your eyes and work on your breathing and cleanse your mind and really, you know, take in, you know, and really analyze your inner self, you know, Mm -hmm. it could do a lot of beneficial things to your mind and the way you think, and you can actually, you know, conclude things about yourself that you never even realized before, Yes, you know, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times people think meditation is clearing the mind, right. And they, they get into that trap and they're like, I'm not doing it right. So meditation is simply just building presence, right? Yes. So some days I feel like guru G levitating off the mat. (laughs) Other days I'm like, I can't get my grocery list out of my head. Yeah. Neither day is valid or not valid. Right. It just is. So it's really about you connecting with yourself. It's, it's checking in with yourself. How do I feel for that day? Right. right. What are my emotions? What does my mind look like? What does my physical body feel like? Do I have any aches and pains? Right. How I'm going to stop for just a few minutes a day and I'm going to connect with myself and go, okay, how is this, this 
operating system called Erica doing? How am I, you know, do I need some updates? Do I need, you know, to throw some things away? Do I need to, you know, what do I need to do in order to care for myself and nurture myself and love myself. Um, and then as we start to ask us those questions, then it's amazing the people, places, situations, and circumstances and events that we need to come into alignment. They just right. fall into our laps when we really start to tune into ourself and, yeah. and our higher self, really. Our definitely our higher self. And I, I think people start to, if you could tune into your higher self and start to understand you as a person, you can come to, you can learn so much about yourself and really strengthen your inner self and the way you, you know, your self-esteem, the way you feel about yourself, everything, courage, was wisdom, strength, and hope, all that stuff ties in, you know, and, you know, now I want to go back just a few steps for parents. What would you suggest to them is a good way for them to start with their children, you know, putting them on a healthy, you know, living and a healthy eating habit. You know, what would you suggest to those new parents that try to, you know, because sometimes I see children, I see children between the, you know, the young, they're probably, you know, in grade school and they're already overweight and I clinge in, inside of me. I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, even though it's easy to lose weight, they shouldn't be at that weight yeah. at that age, you know, and I feel for them because I worry, even though they're not my child, I'm like, oh my God, 10 years from now, five years from now, what's going to yeah. happen to that child? You know, yeah. what would you suggest to parents about, you know, feeding their child and getting their child on a healthy living habit? Well, the first thing I say, it's about modeling behavior, right? Children are going to not necessarily always listen to what you say, but they're going to pay attention to what you do. Right. And so if you're living unhealthy, if you're not eating well, if you're not drinking water, if you're kicking the dog and yelling at your spouse, then, you know, your, your kids are, are also going to model that same behavior. Right. And so it's really self-examining yes. and it's a huge responsibility to be a parent. I think people yeah. take it so lightly. They do. You know, yeah. when I decided to have my daughter, who's an adult now, um, you know, I took that so seriously. I like, did too, I, yeah. It was like a job. Like I was yeah. like, okay, so what are all the things that I want to teach this little, this little life? Right. And, yeah. and, and how am I going to, you know, shift from the old patterns that, that I was raised in right. that were unhealthy. How can I shift into a healthier um, yes. learning? And so, and then I kind of pendulum swing too far in the direction. And then you kind of go back, you know, cause I have very strict parents as, as Marines and, um, you know, so I kind of went more kind of that hippie free spirit. And I yeah, was like, yeah. oh, no, 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 we need structure. We need structure. <laughs> so I kind of, so yeah, there's that. And, and that's the thing is kids really need structure. So I would say, yes. number one, you got to model behavior. Number two, you've got to create structures for yourself. There have to be boundaries in place. Yeah. You can't, it's not free. You know, we're not raging free range kids. Like they, they need to know where their bounds are. And the yeah. reason for that is so that they, they feel safe and they feel secure and they're nervous nervous system can develop in a healthy way. Cause yeah. otherwise, if they don't know what to expect, they're going to be hypervigilant all the time. Meaning they're going to go, Oh, anything can change at any given time. I can't expect anything. Right. And so they're going to be constantly driving cortisol, epinephrine, norepinephrine. They're going to yes. be in fight or flight mode all the time. So they're not going to digest well. So right. creating that structure for kids is so important, you know, involving them in that process. Okay. So this is what time we're going to wake up in the morning and this is our morning routine and this is what time we're going to eat breakfast and this is what time we're going to get off to school and this is what time you know and building that consistency yeah. unfortunately most of our brains uh they are looking for the dopamine response yeah and so they want the drama most of mm -hmm. our brains and so if there's not enough drama, then we'll create it. And it may not be lifetime television movie drama, but it may be something like, oh, we're going to do our schedule for a couple of days and then we're not going to do it anymore because, right. because we, we just, that's too boring. Right. Yeah. And it does take a person some time before they, they really can get their mind and their body and their actions to be in alignment yeah. so that they'll want to do a schedule. Cause uh, uh, truth be told, I structure everything and it is very boring. It's very monotonous at times. However, that's how you build something, right? And so yeah. you're building a human. And so you want to teach these humans, these little humans 
strong habits that are going to last them a lifetime. Yeah. And that's really important. So structure, super important, really checking your own mental health, taking time for just downtime where you're yeah. not busy. Um, I think that's important too. You mm -hmm. know, you've got this practice and that practice and you're doing this, you're doing that. It's okay not to overcommit yourself. Right. You don't have to be super mom. You know, um, I know many of us try to be all things to all people um, and we don't want to let our kids down, but that's not healthy either. That kind of right. gets into that overextending and then leveraging your community, right? Really befriending some of the other moms and going, Hey, I can take to soccer on Tuesday. Day. Hey, can you take the ballet on Wednesday? Right. You know, starting to build those communities, which I think unfortunately have been lost uh, a lot too, where yeah. most of us don't even talk to our neighbors. We don't even know they exist. I know. And so we really want to build that community because it does take a village. You can't yeah. do it all by yourself. There's just way too many demands, um, you know, that are in play. So I think that's another way too to keep the stress and the pressure down. And then lastly, I would say pre-preparation and planning is the key to success. Use your crock pot. It is so mm -hmm. easy. You can I love the crock pot. <laughs> I know. You can put proteins in there. You can do a whole week of protein, yeah. you know, already ready to go. So all you'd have to do is saute some veggies and you're right. good to go. And you have to plan your meals. If you don't know what you guys are going to be eating, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and your snacks for the day, forget it. And yeah. trying to, especially when you're trying to eat whole foods, you're not going to be able, it's not going to be always quick and convenient. You have to plan. And yeah. whether that's little hacks like overnight oats, you know, where, you know, you're, you're using your, your sleep time as your mm -hmm. kind of prep time, you know, or like I said, the crock pots or, you know, just simple sautés and including yeah. the kids and making sure that, you know, they're helping, obviously, you know, if they're too young to use a knife, they can't, but they can do things like wash vegetables and right. helping them to be a part of that process. Yes. They may be taking them to the farm. We did like strawberry picking when my daughter yes. was little and Mm -hmm. You know, all these little activities so that they yeah. begin to get connected to they where do. their food comes from. I think mm -hmm. those, those are some really important things that I like to teach my families uh, when they come in. So, you know, it's amazing, but I bought a, a, a cookbook and it was for the crock pot. I used to make meatloaf in the, in the crock pot. You could do <laughs> anything in the crock pot. Like this one woman, she had, a, I don't remember her name, but I have the cookbook downstairs in the kitchen and mm -hmm. she made everything and her recipes were outstanding. I, mm -hmm. I could, I'm telling you, I got on a crock pot, crock pot kick and I made everything you could think of in that crock pot. It's amazing. If you have, you know, if you go out and find the recipe books, you can make anything and it's great yeah. because it's easy, especially if you're a mom and you're working, yeah. you can yeah. make it in the morning on slow. You can come mm -hmm. home and it's in 15 minutes on high mm -hmm. and it's done and you, exactly. you've got yourself a meal you exactly. know, and it's yeah. healthy. Exactly. And you're not going to the drive through you know, eating God only knows what, which is in there. So exactly. there are ways if you prioritize it. Exactly. And that's the thing. I think people get in their head and they get overwhelmed and, oh my God, this has to be so complicated. And it really yes. isn't. It's just more of prioritizing it and putting it in perspective. And as you do that, you know, it just starts to fit into your life. And that's why I love to mm -hmm. teach people how to have a holistic lifestyle. Yeah. Because it it doesn't take effort for me to live the way I live. Right. It just takes intention. It takes um, intention. Exactly. Yeah, and, and I have to focus on it. And, but, mm -hmm. but what else would I focus on if I'm not focusing on what I'm doing during the day? I mean, yeah. I know, you know, Erica's world may be fun, but, but <laughs> I, I don't necessarily, I try not to disassociate. I try to yeah. stay in my body, you know, yeah, most yeah. of the time and not wander off. And so that's also another great uh, reason why people should meditate because it helps you to build that awareness. It's like a muscle. You go to the gym, you know, to build your strength. Same thing with meditation. You're building, you know, your strength with your body, your mind, and your spirit and your consciousness. A hundred percent, one hundred percent, and I I think we also need to remind people too in the grocery stores. There's a lot of marketing, false marketing in the grocery store, and people don't realize it. And I get you know I get upset with them. You know I read this book. It was I think it's vegan versus vegetarian one. It was a while back ago, and they they told they showed you what they did to the animals, and they showed how when they got sick they put antibiotics in 
all the cows, you know, for the milk and this and that. And our bodies weren't meant for these things. Our, you know, it's not good to take antibiotics too much, you know, and to begin with. And they're putting it in the milk that we're drinking. And was our body really meant for us to drink cow's milk, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, and and it really wasn't. If you go back into history, you know, yes. our body was not meant to drink cow's milk. You know, yes. cow's milk was for the baby, ca- you know, calves. That's what, what the cow's milk was for. It was not meant for human beings. And, you know, and, you know, you know, the antibiotics, you see little girls, they're, they're, they're starting to go through puberty at a really young age. And, you know, it says no added biotic, you know, antibiotics. So that means there is antibiotics in it, but there's no extra ones in it. But yeah. when you read no added bio- antibiotics, real quickly, you think, oh, there's none in there. Yeah. You know, same thing with the eggs. You have to be so yeah. careful. People are buying chicken eggs, yes. you know, and again, was our body really meant for eggs you know like if you go back into the i mean like you know hundreds and thousands of years ago it was more plant-based you know and that's people were living long lives you know using you know plant-based foods and you know we have to think about you know what our body really needs and you know and what we're putting in it and when we're buying these foods to really look at the market and look at what's really in these foods Yes, exactly. I think, again, going back to that awareness, right? And like you said before, if you can't pronounce the ingredients, it's probably not good for you. And I like to teach people because, you know, there's so much conversation around food and people get so overwhelmed. And I yeah. go, I'm going to make it super easy. <laughs> if it's God made, eat it. If it's man made, stay away from it. I like man- that does not have a good track record overdue, you know, like like it really, I mean, he's, if you look back at history, yeah, very, Mm -hmm. very innovative. Uh, Mm -hmm. However, the original, the way that it was grown or used, that is really, you know, the way in which we should, should eat. And so um, I also teach people sustainability and getting off the food supply and starting to learn how to grow their own food, um, which is a lot easier than you may think, because now they have so many hydroponic units, you know, that you can have right in your garage or or even in a corner. Like I have one in my dining room of all places. Mm -hmm. Um, and my, my little puppies will go and nibble on it, you know, (laughs) that's a whole nother thing, you know, but, uh, it's cause I don't have, you know, living at the beach we don't have yards. Um, but the hydroponic is such a good option too, because then I can grow it and, you know, it's available and readily available. And then yeah. at least I know where my sources are also checking some of the local farms and farmers markets, mm-hmm. uh, speaking with the farmers and building those relationships, yes. I think are really important as well, because they're going to give you that local agriculture. And also they're very upfront with their growing practices. Yeah. So ask them, even if they're not U.S. USDA certified organic, they may have either low spray or no spray practices. So that would be considered more organic. And so I think just building that consciousness to where, where is my food coming from? What what am I feeding myself with? Um, And that's not just food. It's also, you know, what am I exposing my mind to? What am I listening to? Am I watching the news every day? Am I stressed out about whatever new drama, trauma that that they're putting on the television about right now, you know, and I'm not yeah. saying don't be informed. That's not what I'm saying. I love right. reading news. I read it all the time, but I also don't indoctrinate myself with it to the point where I'm stressing myself out because yeah. at the end of the day, there's only so much that I personally have control over. Right. If there's exactly. something that I personally can do, then I will do it. Mm-hmm. At the same instance, if there's nothing I can do about it, that's when I need to release it over. Exactly. To higher power because I'm not going to stress myself out over over something you can't do that I'm powerless over. Like we, I think as human beings are so addicted to powerlessness and so addicted to helplessness and self pity. Mm -hmm. Like we love to feel less than who we really are Yeah. than acknowledging, no, I do have power over this. If if I don't like the food supply, I can grow my own food. I can, you know, I can do all kinds of things. And that's why I love that inventory. Um, Doing that inventory at the beginning of the year is so important. And then creating a realistic plan. I mean, in our business, we 
we do quarterly plans. So we, right. we create plans that, I mean, because in my mind, everything's going to happen tomorrow, you know, of course. Right. But in reality, it takes time to implement things. And again, helping that dopamine, helping yeah. all the epinephrine and norepinephrine, not overextending yourself, but breaking it down into little chunks that are doable and manageable. You would be shocked at how much you can get done if you structure your life like that. Oh, I mean, definitely. It's, it's definitely. absolutely amazing. So, you yeah. know, when I structure myself, I can accomplish so much more. And then, you know, I, I have to say there are days I just don't feel it. And in those days that I don't structure myself, mm -hmm. I get barely anything done. You yeah. really have to have organization in your life, you know, and at least, and you don't have to accomplish every little thing that you plan for that day. If you could accomplish, I always say to people, especially when they're starting out trying to structure their life, if they could just do one thing, one thing in that day, mm -hmm. give yourself a pat on the back. That's a yes. good start, you know, exactly. and as time goes on, they get better and better and better. And before you know it, their, their life becomes so structured. Structured and it's just baby steps. Baby yes. Steps. Yeah. And they built that momentum and you're able to fit in everything that you're fitting in. Like for me, I own my business. So I run my business. Right. I'm also a doctor in my business. So I treat patients. Right. Um, I'm in the media a lot. So I'm on television. I'm on radio. I do podcasts like this. Mm -hmm. There's pitching involved with that. Yeah. I'm in my PhD program. I have my little puppies. My mm -hmm. daughter's gone, but you know, and then I have all of my own self-care things. Yeah. And I'm single, so, you know, I manage all my, my home and all of that. And so I get all of that done and still have time to relax on my couch on Friday night. Yeah. And I still have time to to get, you know, all the things done that I want to get done, done because I have that structure again, yeah. just like little kids. If we put that structure in place, then it helps us to feel safe. Yes. And we're the same way. We're just bigger kids. You know, it's, it's putting those structures in place, especially if we never had those structures. Oh, hundred percent. As I think most of us were kind of latchkey, you know, it's like we had the basics, food, shelter, you know, house, all that kind of stuff. But like, how to do this thing called life. Eh, you know, it was like, we knew what not to do, but we, right. didn't, we weren't necessarily taught how to do what we do. Exactly. So really, it's also about reparenting yourself too. Um, and, and learning um, really from the beginning. And I think when you have a breakdown in something, instead of judging yourself, criticizing yourself, speaking to yourself so poorly, like yes. I asked people to go, if you had a friend that talked to you, like you talked to you, would you keep them as a friend? Exactly. Most people, probably not. And so, right. you know, I tell people, you know, it's not your fault, right? Yeah. But it is your responsibility. Yes. So, you know, you may not have been able to control where you came from yes. and what you've experienced and what you've learned, but you have a responsibility to learn something better. Exactly. And most people are walking around with a computer in their pocket with their phone. Yes. You can Google YouTube. There are some amazing creators out there that at least point you in the right direction. And then right. you it from there. So, and there's 100%. amazing professionals out there too. So, um, we're not alone, even if we feel alone, yes. uh, we do have a great connection and building that connection, I think is so important. So, yeah. Now, before we go, I want to just talk about one quick thing before we go. Now, the vitamin world, okay, the vitamin supplement world is so big, and there's so many people putting labels on it. And you really have to know what you're purchasing. And you really have to know, you know, don't be, a, you know, fall for a lot of these marketing schemes, because there's there, there are hundreds of brands for every, every type of vitamin or supplement. And one thing I always, you know, stress to people too, is I like them to go to a holistic doctor doctor to get blood work, because then you could see what you're really deficient in and you could see what you really need and how much you need of it. Because a lot of times people think, oh, you know, turmeric is good for inflammation. I'll take turmeric. Oh, yeah. you know what? You need vitamin D. I have to I'll get vitamin D, yeah. I'll get zinc, exactly. you know, but okay. How much should you be taking of it? You know, exactly. some people might need more vitamin D than other people. You know, some people might need a little bit more zinc at nighttime or during yeah. the day than another person. So, you know, you know, I think people really need to realize how important it is to go to a holistic doctor, get yes. blood work done, get, yes. you know, that, you know, find out exactly what your body really needs, because yes. sometimes supplements and vitamins can interact with each other. Mm -hmm. And then you have to really know 
what brands are the good brands? What do you think? hundred percent. Oh my gosh. All the things. Yeah. So a supplement is just that it's to supplement, um, mm-hmm. a good diet. It's not to replace a diet. I right. Know we're like, Oh, I just want to take a pill. No. Um, and people can take way too many supplements. Yes. You always want to make sure your supplements are doing things and in order to know what they're doing. You're looking at what's called mechanism of action. And so most people, they don't know like inflammation, for instance, like you mentioned turmeric. So people often take turmeric for inflammation. Inflammation is being driven by something. There's yeah. something that's causing that. Exactly. So you taking, taking turmeric, uh, anecdotally may, may be helpful, but it's not getting to the root cause. It's exactly. just managing symptoms. Right. And that's what a lot of people do is they just, you know, they hear a little bit of this and they hear a little bit of that and they just start taking a whole bunch of supplements. Yeah. And unfortunately the supplement world is like the wild, wild West because there's <laughs> no regulations. Yeah. Um, what what's in the bottle may not be on the bottle. You don't know the manufacturing practices. So I always tell people to look for GMP certified supplements stands for good manufacturing practices. I don't recommend people to buy their uh, supplements on Amazon. There's again, no regulations with that. Um, If -hmm. they are going to get supplements, I recommend they not get it from a big box retailer, but rather supplement store that that's what they specialize in. If they're going to retail, there's also a great resource called consumer labs. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's consumerlab.org. And again, they're third party independent uh, research lab, and you can send supplements in and they'll test them to make sure that they are what's in the bottle is on. Yes. Um, yeah. And I really, I'm very much into, you know, obviously looking at your labs and then determining dosage and things like that. I think most people, it's pretty safe to be on a multivitamin. Mm -hmm. Um, I think a strong multivitamin, not, you know, like I said, one of these in the big box retailers. Yeah. Um, I think a strong multivitamin is really important. I think a strong B complex is important. Mm -hmm. Um, then it gets a little crazy in terms of how people's bodies are set up. Right. But I think it's really important for people to look at different sourcing and pay attention when they're doing that. Uh, of course, I'm going to advocate you to go to a professional. Yes. Um, it's sometimes it's not always in people's budget or their prioritizations to yeah. do that. Um, so just really be mindful. You don't have to take every supplement uh, that you need. And when you start connecting more with your body, yeah. your body will tell you, it'll be like, you know what? I need a little bit of more of this and I need a little bit more of that. And so you're not always taking it just, you know, far and wide. Yeah. I think also I'll, I'll kind of leave it with this is be very careful of a lot of claims. Yes. People make a lot of claims, especially in the MLM marketing worlds, you know, they, they sell, you know, they have direct sellers and they're selling a lot of supplements and they're like, oh, it's going to do this and it's going to do that. And they get very sophisticated with the sales process and yes. oh, we have these doctors and these doctors, which in essence are typically doctors on the payroll, right? They're really looking for third party independently research on that product. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not looking at like, oh, this has turmeric in it. And here's a hundred meta-analysis studies on turmeric and all the benefits of turmeric. No, I want to see this product, this bottle yeah, and what this bottle has been tested for right? and what things this bottle has been tested to help treat. Uh, if they don't have that information, then it's just anecdotal, which yeah. there is, there is some efficacy to anecdotal information. That's why placebos work. Yeah. However, it's important that we don't put false hope. The, the, pills and the supplements are not greater than the human body. Exactly. It's just there to support. I'm not a supplement salesperson. Yeah. Uh, I'm not into that. That's why I did. People tried to recruit me for MLM marketing companies. And I just, I was like, at, at a certain point, I just said, okay, enough. Like I'm not, I'm not a good <laughs> candidate for this, you know, because yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. believe in keeping people on things for the rest of their lives. I, right. I, I do supplement cycling, which, you know, so, so I'll put, you know, depending on what I'm doing. So if we're working on, you know, let's say working on digestion, the patient will yeah. be on a whole bunch of digestive things for a few months and then, then I'll switch it up. And then we're working on minerals and then we're working on detoxification. So I'm always changing Engine my protocols and supplement cycle. Cause I don't want the body to get used to things, mm-hmm. especially it's, it's the body's really smart. So just like working out that's yeah. why the X and those kinds of things did so well for people right. because you're always changing up the protocol 
protocol. You're not, you're not letting the body get used to anything. And the same thing with supplements, you, you've got to always be kind of changing. If you've been taking the same thing for years and years and years, stop taking it. Like you need, you know, you need to, your your body body gets resistant to it, or it gets, it gets the potency, you know, how effective it is on the body decreases because your body just, you know, it's yeah, yeah, it's like, you're going to give this to me. So I don't need to do anything, you know? So yeah, it's, it we really, there's, there's a whole science to, you know, supplements and taking supplements and utilizing them. And so, uh, it's really important to, to learn that, uh, that process instead of just taking a whole bunch of whatever. And what would make me angry too, is a lot of, a lot of companies put a lot of fillers in it. So they say, okay, like you said, it has turmeric, but then there's all these little fillers and it doesn't really have that much turmeric. It has a bunch of other little cheap stuff incorporated with it. And some of these, some of these prices are outrageous. Like if you, if you price these, these supplements, you're like, you know, there was an apple cider vinegar and a beetroot company. And the two of them, they were, they were charging those two supplements together as a powder. They were charging almost $50, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, so it's like crazy stuff like that. And then you look in the back and it's not that much, you know, I was just curious. It wasn't that much beetroot and there wasn't that, you know, much apple cider vinegar, you know, there's just, you know, those are the two major claims that they had in there because, you know, apple cider vinegar is supposed to be great for weight loss. Beetroot is supposed to be great for energy and um, up the metabolism, you know, so they, they, use that as a market employee Mm -hmm. and it and it gets you you know it it gets you a little angry now is there anything people could do like if you know how we we talked about toxins and how Mm -hmm. the body you know incorporates so many toxins and our our organs become sluggish and we step we tend to our our health slowly declines is there anything people can do in their homes you know that can help their detoxification so they can start cleansing their body and start getting their body to really start moving the way it really should a hundred percent yeah so first things first in order to get toxins out you need to stop putting toxins in so that's number one so start working on detoxifying your home um i love what you said before about the shower right so 50 percent of I think it's over 50% of your water comes from the shower. So making sure you have a good solid shower filter, those are some you can get on Amazon. So yeah, yeah, nice, strong shower filter, really important um, to filter. And if you're going to take baths, you have a bath filter too, because that's That's a good point. Yeah. Those are two different, two, two different faucets. Um, In terms of just kind of simple, easy home use, that's even safe for kids. You can do uh, one uh, scoop Epsom salt, one cup Epsom salt and one cup uh, baking soda and mm. that will alkalize, but also it'll help, uh, just a gentle chelation, gentle detoxification. I learned that from one of my mentors, um, and making sure the quality of the Epsom salt obviously is, is good. You don't want to just get the store, right. whatever. Yeah. yeah. So it's a real gentle way. You could do that, you know, 20, 30 minutes, uh, th- three times a week. Um, and you know, just drink a lot of water before and after. So that's really good. Also, um, parsley and cilantro are good heavy metal chelators. Oh, okay. you can put those in, in your food, um, or like a smoothie or something like that. That's really helpful. And then if you really want to get brave, um, I really recommend, um, doing enemas as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get one from, you know, get an enema bag or whatever from the, um, health food store. Um, and there's all kinds of different types of enemas. There's flushing enemas and there's retention enemas. So a flushing enema is just something like you'll put maybe like aloe vera in it, which is really um, obviously a good quality of it. You know, you yeah. put the water and then, you know, clean water, healthy water, and then maybe, you know, four tablespoons of aloe vera, which, you know, is very, it'll lower the inflammation. Yeah. Uh, you can also put a little bit of apple cider vinegar in there too, four, four t- tablespoons. And that's really good for yeast. So if person has a lot of yeast overgrowth, okay. things like that, that can help too. Um, so those are kind of some of the flushing ones. Some of the retention ones, like a popular one is uh, the coffee enema. Um, so again, organic coffee and you boil it and kind of make sure that there's no grains in it, Yeah, um, and put it in there. And that's a retention enema. You can hold it for up to 15 minutes. Don't hold it longer than that. And right. you probably would start off with five. So meaning you put it in, you know, you put the bag up and then you hold it in and that's going to help 
help the gallbladder and the liver produce the bile and okay. be able to push, move that out. So All that's right. really helpful as well. Keeping the digestive system clean. Um, and I'm sure people can YouTube, you know, any of the questions around that. Um, I think we have some things on our website too. So yeah, I think those are just some simple at home things that people can do. Dry brushing is also really good to get the mm -hmm. lymph moving. Um, just those little you know, wooden dry brushes. Right, right, right. Um, yeah. I think those are some really good, easy tips that people, you know, can do air purifiers are so amazing. Yes, they are. Air, so important. So yeah. And making sure you do all your maintenance thing, like, you know, making sure you clean your um, vents and uh, remove the, the filters and all that kind of stuff. Just all the things that you put off and you don't, you don't pay attention to those right. things all add up. They're little things. And so um, putting those things in place, I think are really important and not overwhelming yourself. It's like, okay, I'm going to focus on the water in my house. Yeah. Let's, let's figure out what the solutions are for that. I'm going to get this filter or that filter. I'm going to weigh out, do I want a whole house unit or do I just want a tabletop? You know, there's all different nuances to it, making sure I got my shower filters on, my bath filters on. And now, okay, this quarter, we're just dealing with our water. Right. And then maybe next quarter, you deal with all your cleaning products. And the right. next quarter, you deal with, you know, your beauty products or whatever. So just kind of putting that in place and creating that structure is really important. Now, where could people find you? Like, like if people want to find your website or, you know, do you have like specific areas that people can go to, to learn more about yeah, you? We're, we're pretty, I'm pretty out there. So, um, uh, my website's holisticfamilypracticeva.com. Uh, I have two, uh, socials. So, um, you know, holistic family practice for IG as well as, um, Facebook, uh, and we also have a YouTube channel as well, where I educate people. Um, Excellent. and then my media brand, Dr. Erica Steele. So I have an IG for that. I have Facebook for that, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, we definitely, I'm, I'm pretty much out there. I'm on television a lot. So you'll see me on different, different shows, talking and educating people about holistic health and holistic lifestyle and, and what people can do practically to, to be well. So. Yeah. That's excellent. And do you have a blog maybe with articles and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. On my website, there's on a blog. On your website. Um, awesome. Yeah, exactly. And we, we convert also a lot of our videos and our interviews and stuff um, into blogs as well. So if people don't want to, you know, read there's yeah. the reading and there's also the video too. So yeah, it's that's good. awesome. That's awesome. So before we go one more time, tell everybody your, your website so they don't forget. Yes. It's holistic family practice VA is in Virginia VA.com. So holistic family practice VA.com. And you can literally Google Dr. Erica Steele and it'll come up pages of stuff. So yeah. Dr. Dr. Steele, this has been such a pleasure. You gave us so much information. People are, are going to get so much out of this interview. And I, got, I have to just say thank you so much for coming on and giving us all this information. And thank you for what you do, because, you know, I am a huge fan in holistic living because it changed my life. You know, it, it, it changed my health completely. So I love, I love hearing doctors talk about holistic living and teaching it to other people. So you are a valuable source to this community and thank you for everything that you do. Oh, thanks for having me. This has been great. Uh, you're very welcome. You have a great day. You too. <laughs>